Hey, welcome back everybody. Another great day because today is the day that you learn Dance and Days from Led Zeppelin. And you'll learn all those parts just like you hear it on the record. We're going to talk about the rhythm guitar parts and those great leads that happen. This is a great example of how Jimmy Page loves to build huge guitar arrangements and multi-layers. And we'll talk about all the individual pieces that are going into this, but I'll also sort of give ideas if you're trying to play this song live, how you can do this with one or two guitars. Hey, if you haven't done so already, um, appreciate it if you jump down and hit subscribe, ring the bell. It lets you know every time I drop new content, which I do every single week. Um, and let me know in the comments what you think about this one. And also, if you're looking for other ways to support the channel, there's Super Thanks right below, which is just like throwing me a tip. And I would love if you go check out my Patreon page where there's all kinds of exclusive content and you can get tabs and chord charts for all the songs I do here on the YouTube channel. So go check it out. Okay, Dance and Days. Wow, there's a lot to this song. Um, so Jimmy Page, as I'm sure you know, um, loves to layer guitars and loves to build up these great guitar um, arrangements um, with the songs that he does on Led Zeppelin, and this one is no different. Um, so we're going to start out, um, the song is best played in open G tuning, and open G tuning is drop your low E string down to a D, Drop your A string down to a G and your high E string down to a D. So you have an open G chord. So those are your notes. Okay. So <clears throat> also in terms of tone, wow, he's all over the place in here. You know, you see him with his Les Paul live and you know he uses, you know, his Telecaster a lot. Um, recording wise, but man, he, he either makes a Les Paul sound thin or he's got some coil splitting going on, or he's just not using the guitars that you think he's going to be using. Right. Um, so for me, um, I'm going with a Les Paul and I actually happen to have a uh, coil split pickups in here, um, which I think get me closer to the real tone on that rhythm guitar. It seems very, not quite Fender single coil, but not quite Gibson humbucker either, so I'm sort of splitting my uh, splitting my humbucker to get this tone on rhythm. Um, I'm using my bridge pickup for the rhythm, um, and um, so we're going to learn a little bit different uh, chord shapes maybe than you might be used to for this. So let's check them out. So all right, so the song is in uh, I guess the key of G. And the intro, in terms of the rhythm guitar, okay? Um, you'll see chord shapes over my shoulder here, but uh, the little intro, it goes like this. So that's what's going on behind the those lead parts um, going on there. So we'll get to all those lead parts, but let's just follow through with the rhythm guitar part here, right? So that's the piece that's going on in between or underneath that um, intro lead. Sort of sounds like uh, uh, Rolling Stones' um, Honky Tonk Woman, right? but that's another lesson. Um, okay, so now we're gonna go into our verses. Now the verse chords are really interesting. So these are new chord shapes, or they, they might be new chord shapes for you. I sort of haven't seen these used by anybody else. And you know, normally when you're playing with an open G tuning, you sort of know that you know straight across is a, is a chord, is a major chord, right? And then many of us know the Keith Richards chord that goes on top of that, right? Where you overlay, um, one up on the second string and two up on the fourth string. But that's not actually what you're hearing um, on this record, to my ear anyway. Um, so let's take a look at that. So the first chord 
It does come out of the intro and take you to a C, which is straight across at the five uh, fret. But here's the, uh, here's the little chord you, uh, or the fingering you do on top of that. So it's one up on the second string and two up on the first string. All of the sort of hammer-ons and things that you're going to be doing on this is on, you're modifying the first and second string. You're leaving the other strings alone. Right? And then you're going to go up a fret, that's a C sharp, but instead of playing the open C sharp first, you're going to go right into the chord shape that you're hammering on, right? So you're just going to go right from to this one, which is two frets up on first and second string. And you're just lifting those off, right? So those two again. it off with that little your little rock and roll riff there on the fifth and fourth string and you can hear a little embellishment sometimes that he does on top of that you can throw one of those in there something like that all right so now we're gonna go down the next part is down two frets, and we're going to do our second chord shape again. This time off of the third fret. And then we're going to go down to the second fret, and we're going to uh, now modify again the E and the B string, but you're only coming up one fret. And then the last little bit. So instead of doing a two frets up, it's not that, it's a minor. So that second part again. Like that. You sort of modify how you're going to chug chug at the end of that. The first one is... second one all right and then you close it out just like you did in the beginning and then you're starting over on <clears throat> on that second verse and that's where the lead comes in and we'll cover that in just a sec too right that's how the verses go round and round there's no there's sort of no deviation from that right um so the one part that where it changes is when you're going towards the outro, towards the end of the song after the last verse, right? So now we're going to do a climb. Okay, and that climb is going to sound like this. And then you're in the out. Same thing you did in the beginning. that twice and that's basically all the the rhythm figures on that climb I like to just play it straight because if you've got another guitar player that's playing along with that you know you've hear you hear there's a little lead that goes over that right it's sort of a we'll cover that in a sec but if you're if you've got sort of a lead going like that and you're trying to do So it's a little much. It's all stepping on it. So I just, I think it's, it sounds better if it's straight. I think it sounds closer to what I hear on the record when you just play it straight. There you go. So that's the rhythm section. So now let's start talking about the lead. Okay, so for the leads, um, God, there's, there's a lot of guitars that are layered. 
um, to get you what you're hearing on the record. Um, but let's talk about the parts. Um, and I'll talk about how you can sort of replicate that live um, if you've got a single guitar playing the, the lead parts. Um, won't be exactly how, you know, they, what you hear it on the record because he's got a ton of guitars um, layered on there to really get that sound. Um, but there's a way that you can get this sounding really, really close. So I personally think the leads are full on, you know, sound best, just full on humbucker. Um, so I'm not splitting the coil here. I want to get that tough sound. Um, and uh, so this is the part that's going over the very intro first, right? So we're down here on the second fret and it's sort of, there's a little figure that's between the second and the third fret on the second string, right? All right, and it's gonna go something like this. Okay, so that's wiggling between the second and third fret, right? Now you could hammer on, but I don't think that's really what he's doing. I think it's more of a, more of a bend. And in my ear, I think there's a, I think he's using a Strat on one of those layered guitars um, on the second part, because you can hear that last note that, on that harmony part, right? That just sounds like it's bending down. So I tend to think he's using a Strat on that note because he splits them on, on the record. He's got one note going. I don't know if he plays it there, but it might be bending it. But there's one note going, and there's another note going, right? But I think the easiest way to do that is to grab it, which is the same notes on the fourth and second string on the fifth fret, and you slide up and down two frets. So it. hard to jump up there and get that get it cleanly but there, that was a little better now if you're if you're the only guitar playing this song and you're trying to do this live you sort of just got to mix both together so on that you know when you're playing open G you can grab that note That's an approximation. <laughs> I played that very badly, but um, there's ways that you can sort of get away with um, sounding close on a single guitar. Now the next lead part that you hear is um, this great sort of climb off of a C chord. Um, and uh, I think you could do it without a slide, um, but to really finish off that riff the way that you hear it on the record, I think it's best if you can manage it with a slide. So um, I'm gonna try that here. For me, um, for me, it tends to work when I'm using my slide on my ring finger for this. Um, because I'll show you how you, uh, you know, fret this part. So, so this is gonna be over that C chord um, where your rhythm guitar is going. that part right it's gonna go like this I'll do it slowly and I start with my pinky um, but because of the open G tuning a lot of these notes fall right in place right so let's see so that's the first part it just goes all the way across you're starting on seven up to nine and then you're just gonna bar across I bar across with my index finger and go individual notes all the way across. So fifth string, fourth, third, second, first. Now I'm gonna slide, and I'm gonna slide up to my C note on the B string, which is 13, okay? So. And that puts you right in position um, to continue that.
So that's 12, or that's 13, up to 14, and then 16 down to 13. Sounds best with the slide. I'm, I'm pulling the slide away so you can see it, right? But that riff all together. Now other people play it. I've seen other tutorials where they say, where they uh, offer something a little bit different where you don't go all the way to the E string. You, you sort of do this. All on the B string. So you start the B string on eight and then go up to 13 which is fine but i just think it's for me i like playing it straight across and then slide up to 13 all right got some kind of grounding issue going on here um and then the next part of the riff is exactly the same Now we're going to come up and do that great evil sounding slide um, from 15 or no, what is that? 17 down to 15 on the second, third and fourth string. And if you think about it, this is just like a normal C chord, right? When you play a, in a standard tuning, you know, when you play a C this way, if you were to play that up here on the octave, you're just grabbing that triad, which is which makes your C chord, right? Um, and you're sliding that down, um, but just know that what you're grabbing here is the C chord, sliding down to 13, and then back up again and sliding down to. Sorry, you were sliding down from 17 to 15. Now you're going to go 17 to 14. All right, let's try that riff all the way through. Again. An alternate way you could do it is to stay on the, when you do your slide up, you could slide up on the G string and it puts you right in that position if you wanted to, so it could look like this. It's just whatever you choose to do, what feels natural to you. Um, but try, try all of those. So one of the other lead parts that you hear um, is on the, as accompanying the outro. And remember the outro chords where you're doing that part right so on the record he's got two different tracks going on um, and they're playing uh, I think they're playing single notes um, but they're playing part of that chord they're playing the G string and the B string um, separately so one guitar is doing right so that's all on the g string except that last note is the the d string at that same fret and the other one's just doing the same parts of the chord on the b string And he may end it on the G note, on the G string, because the other one's do, doing the D string, right? So if you want to do them together, you can. And then it ends with this sort of straight across. sort of my favorite part in there and then the last part of your riff your lead is it's just doing a high octave of the intro riff up here on 14 and 15 instead of 
two and three, right? Depending on how many guitars you got going on when you're playing this live, um, you know, one of them's gonna be doing this. And then, you know, on the record, I think you still hear the, those notes in those positions down there. So you could jump. which is, if you can do that, great. Um, I tend to sort of keep the high energy on the, or high octave energy when I'm playing this live and I'll do something like this. Which is not record correct, but it still fits. So you're just making sort of like an A7 shape um, and you're just doing fourth string, second string, and sort of muting the G string in between. Now the last thing I'll say is, I did these all these different parts sort of, you know, without the slide and with the slide. You can, you can play those rhythm parts with that slide on your ring finger, um, right? So these chords. just again trying to get used to doing that but you're using your middle finger and your pinky finger for those but but it can work so you can do sort of both parts of the slide part and the rhythm part so you can effectively do this song live on a single guitar Sort of drops out if you're the only guitar once you try and do that. You know, you've got drums and bass going on. If you don't have another guitar there, to my ear anyway, it sort of drops out. So I think this song sounds best with two guitars. If you can have one guy just holding down that rhythm um, and you can, or someone else focusing on the lead parts alone, it sounds just, just the right amount of full. All right, well, that was Dancing Days. Did you learn anything new today? I hope so. So if you haven't done so already, um, and you like what you saw, jump down, click subscribe, ring the bell, let you know every time I drop new content, which I do every week. Let me know in the comments what you think about this, and if there's another song you want me to take on and do a lesson similar to this for you. Um, and uh, until next week, take care everybody.